flour, and it's just all-purpose flour going in. I've got half a cup of sugar going in. Easy, right? Then we're going to put in the leavening, which is two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Not baking soda, but baking powder. Going in. And I've got some cinnamon. And I just wanted to talk to you briefly about cinnamon. Um, I got to do a book signing at the Spice House a couple weeks ago. Has anybody been to the Spice House? There's one in Evanston and there's one on Wells in Old Town. <gasps> you walk in there, it's like you're in an exotic country. You've like left America completely. The smell is so pungent. And yeah, I feel like I'm in like a Salman Rushdie novel or something, you know. So one of the things I bought while I was there was this Saigon cinnamon. So this is Vietnamese cinnamon which is, um, I'm not even pass this around so you guys can have a sniff. It's just a little more interesting than McCormick. McCormick is nice too. What we get in the store is nice, but this is a little fresher. And it's just got some other notes to it. So, um, you know, I might ask you to pass this around. Just, just give a sniff. It's one of the things we did with the Montessori kids yesterday. We had them smell everything. But it's kind of wake up their olfactory senses. So I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of that Saigon cinnamon in there. And then a little bit of salt, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using table salt today, which I don't usually. I usually use kosher salt. Um, but this is just regular salt because I'm with you guys. Usually I use kosher salt when I think I'm going to be distracted. Like if the phone's going to ring or I get pulled away. Because you can see kosher salt. It's bigger flaked. But I know I'm with you guys and you're focused and I'm focused. So I use table salt today. But they're totally interchangeable. So I'm just stirring this together with a wooden spoon. And um, you know, if you're going to do this with your kids, which uh, this is a perfect recipe to do with children, have them stir this together. But I would put it in a larger bowl than I've got. One of the tricks to cooking with kids is put stuff in really high wall bowls. So when they're stirring, stuff doesn't jump out of the bowl as easily. It still will a little bit, but not much much. And if you can, put a damp towel underneath the bowl so it doesn't spin on the counter. Because they sort of haven't gotten down the idea of like holding the bowl with one hand and stirring them together. So that way then they don't need to be too, doing two things at once necessarily. So you're just going to stir that together until it looks like your cinnamon is mixed in. And while that's happening, let's warm up our butter. I've just got a quarter cup of butter here and I'm going to melt that. Which is part of why we don't need a mixer for it. Everything's going to be in liquid form. So let's melt the butter while I mix them together. So that's the dry ingredients, right? Now we're going to get the wet ingredients together in a separate bowl. I'm just going to crack into there one egg, whisk it, and add a, a half a cup of milk. So just one egg. Save the shell for the compost. Who's composting this year? Good job. Do you have enclosed? Or, oh, is, it, is it down in the ground or up above? Above ground. And is it... Um, I'm shopping for a composter. It's the, it's a, what do they call that? It's like a barrel that turns. You hand mix it yourself. And is that a bother or that's okay? They say like you'll have dirt in five to six weeks. And can I put the gingerbread house in my composting? <laughs> you know, it's just sitting there. We didn't finish it and now it's... <laughs> Don't you think by, April, by May you should retire the gingerbread house from December? Yeah. I hate to throw it out though, you know, it's so... I put days into that thing. <laughs> and it's funny because they used to eat the whole thing down to the cardboard. And this year, I don't know what happened. It's just sitting there, picked, you know, it's a little picked at, but it's a little sad looking. But I should have brought it so you guys could have helped finish it off for me. All right, so I'm just going to whisk this egg together. I think it's my mouse trap. I see, that's how I see if I have mice or not. See if somebody's eating the way. I saw something on TV where they have a place, they have a, like a kid's museum with mice. It's a zoo, I think, and there's a, a mice, like a mouse, uh, I don't know what they call it, case, this glass, and they make them a house out of bread. And they set this like whole bread house into the thing, and then you wait about a month, and it, they eat their way out and make bigger windows and, you know, make the doors wider and do remodeling of their house, of their bread house. So I was thinking my gingerbread house could be that, but nah. And I just came back from Denver. I was in Denver judging Food Network Challenge. So I still do do stuff for Food Network occasionally. And I had to judge um, giant gingerbread houses. 
like houses that were big enough that you could walk in. Yeah.